a couple days ago, if you were watching my channel, you saw that I did a review for, for this guy, what I thought about it, and I said that I would do some upcoming videos in regards to how the software actually worked. So today, I'm gonna give you guys a quick look. I'm not gonna go into depth. It's a fairly simple piece of software, but I'm gonna go into depth about my workflow a little bit on how I've been working with the 360 footage that comes out of this camera and how I get it ready to put into the editor as normal footage, I guess. So let's do that. Number one is, here's a little adapter. Here's of course the card that comes out of the 360. I put it in here and we're gonna snipe it into my computer down here. Now this is all gonna be done on a Mac, but it shouldn't really matter. The software should be the same, I would think. So we put the card in, of course, wait for it to launch. There it is, nice little untitled. Uh, and inside the card, as you guys can see, you'll see a DCIM folder with the camera 01 and all the footage. So anything that ends with the INSP, those are gonna be 360 photos. Anything that ends with the INSV, of course, is going to be video. So the P for photo, V for video. Just so you know when you're kind of searching for or when you're searching through all your footage looking for the video, I guess. So down at the bottom here, I'm going to close this. Actually, I'll just move this off to the side. You'll see I have already set up the Insta360 Studio. So we're just going to open that up. Now, the other thing to be aware of is... 360 footage, because this is coming in at 4K, and if you were to have a 360X, um, that's coming in at 5.7K, I believe. The more features you kind of turn on inside the software, the harder it is during the export phase. So kind of be aware, you know, it's these are big files that your computer has to deal with. So what we're going to do here, number one, you can log in at the top if you so choose. I haven't done it, but you can. We're gonna come here and you'll see drag a 360 video in here or you can just hit the plus button. So I'm gonna hit the plus and it automatically takes me there because I've been in it before. I'm gonna go find a video file so we'll just look real quick. Let's try this one. Okay, so you'll see this video starts, of course, which is excellent. And you can scroll around in here and if you grab the screen, you can move it around to kind of get it in the angle. And this is the what's called the pano player up at the top. Okay, you can zoom in and out, kind of figure out what you what, want to look at. You'll see on the side here, 3840 by 1920. Um, that's it's dealing with the whole footage, which is good. So here's kind of the step that I usually take. Number one, I haven't done a calibrate stitching, and I'm not going to kind of talk about that right now. But setting wise, what I do is I leave this nice and high. I say, let's remove purple fringe. Let's do an optical flow stitching and gyroscopic stabilization. And you'll see the effect, of gyroscop the effect of gyroscopic stabilization of flow state won't show during preview playback and it'll be implemented during export. Because of this, I do this in two phases. So excellent. What I'm gonna do now is because I want to use this free capture, free capture works best if the footage has gone through its stabilization phase first. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to export this, but before I do that, I want to change my bitrate up as high as possible. So I'm going to put this up at 60. Um, I wish you could go a little higher, but that's what you get. So we're going to stay with 60. It says it's superb. Cool. Export. And you'll see if you scroll, you'll see output directory. So I'm gonna say, I've got this, I've got a folder picked already, you could browse. So I've got it already chosen. You can name it if you want. I don't have anything in that folder right now, so off it goes, export. And at this point in time, you and I just sit back and wait. Now again, this is very dependent on how fast your computer is. So don't be alarmed if this takes a little longer than you think it should. I'll be back as soon as this is done. All right, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna pause pause the video for a second before we get back into it. One of the things that I didn't explain that I probably should have explained was, and I want you to see this, is in that corner where I clicked on uh, remove purple fringe, optical flow, flow state stabilizer, uh, you will notice that the moment you hit that optical flow stitching, the flow state stabilizer turns to 
uh, gyroscopic stabilization. So it is a different type of stabilizer. Is the gyroscopic better than the flow state? I can't really answer that. Sometimes I find the flow state works better and sometimes I find the gyroscopic works better. So a lot of times what I would do is actually export the clip twice, actually look at it in its 360 mode. So I would actually just preview it and look at which one seems like it's moving the best. And at that point I would choose that one because sometimes the flow state works better and that optical flow stitching is not a big deal. Um, and sometimes it's the other way. So just wanted to fire that out for you guys and back to the video. So while this is exporting, one of the things that you could do if you wanted, I've exported this whole clip. Now, maybe it's not this whole clip that I actually want. So inside here, you'll notice that if I were to say I actually only want from, let's say 20 seconds, I could set an in marker, so that's the start point, and I only want from 20 seconds to 44 seconds, mark an out point. So what happens is it's only gonna export that part of the clip with all those features turned on. So the purple fringe removal and the stabilizer, etc., etc. so that I'm not exporting the whole thing. I'm gonna do that afterwards because I always like to have a little bit more footage to work with than less, if that makes sense. I'll get back to you in a sec. It's still working, only at 14%. Feels like I should have picked this shorter clip to do for you guys, but whatever. It's all for you. Okay, so tip number one. Here's tip number one for you. Editing directly off the SD card is gonna slow the process down considerably. And that's kind of what I'm experiencing right here. This export that I'm doing through the software is easily taking, my guess is anywhere from seven, eight, nine minutes to do a one minute clip. So the recommendation, of course, my tip to you is before you do any of this, copy the footage that you're gonna work with to the physical hard drive of the computer, then do all your work from that file. That's gonna be way faster um, than working directly off the card. All right, this should be close to done. Let's get into the actual editing portion. All right, so that file has finally exported and we're going to now import that new file that we've created. So we're gonna go back up to that plus and back into our exported file folder that we created. Hopefully you created one too. And we're going to click on that, which it should be this one. We'll open that up. There it is, perfect. So before we go too far, what we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda just scrub through this to kinda figure out where that beginning piece is that we wanna start our video at. So I'm just gonna play through this a little bit. And it's when I come a little lower. So I'm kind of playing around up at the top of the roof. Yeah, right around here somewhere. So I'm gonna come back a little bit. So first off, we're gonna change the mode. So up at the top, there's that panel player and free capture. So we're gonna switch it to free capture and we're gonna spend pretty much the rest of the time in this free capture. So we're gonna click on this and find that spot again, which was back here. I'm gonna just move this around. Let's say, at about here, about the eight second mark. Now number one, this is where I want my clip to start. So I'm gonna hit this, which is that start time. And I'm gonna say this is where it starts. Because I've got this angled where I want it, perfectly straight, I can even go in or out. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do out a little bit. You can go set, cool. Now you could go I'm walking, 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 walking. And by the time I get to here, I can be like, well, at this point, I actually wouldn't mind being zoomed back in to a little bit more normal. So we'll set another keyframe. You gotta remember two keyframes for one, can't be any closer than a second apart. And the distance between this one and this one is how long that motion takes. So usually any kind of movement or keyframe that we do, we're gonna kind of implement them in pairs. So it's zoomed in kind of where I want. We're gonna play this for just a couple seconds, like that. As soon as the camera goes across, I'm gonna realize I wouldn't mind having the camera spin around to see me. So I have to set a keyframe at this point. 
how long is that transition going to take? So I want it to take not too long, but a little bit of time, right about that amount of time. So now I'm going to spin the camera to see me. So I'm way down there. There I am, pointing the camera up. So I'm going to just zoom in on me a little bit. That's about as close as I can get. Keyframe it. I'm staring at me, staring at me, staring at me, nice. I'm like, hold on, let's see what's on the roof, shall we? Keyframe, how long, just look at the roof. Not too long, but a little bit, I'm coming down. So I'm going to spin the camera kind of up there. Keyframe, play, 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 it's coming down, coming down, stop, click. Play, 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 play. It should be on me by now. Stop. Bring it down. Maybe back a little bit. Right. Nice. Keyframe. I'm going to start walking down this way, which is lovely. But, oh, I should be seeing what's on the street right now. So, keyframe. Spin it whichever direction. Again, whatever direction I'm going to spin is the way it's going to spin. Oh, missed that. Hold on. Go back, make sure I play first, play, I need to get that spin happening, play, 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 and by here it's going to spin, there we go, so spin, onto the street, keyframe, play, 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 camera should naturally, because of the way I recorded, spin back at me, nice, but I wouldn't mind having it focus on me better. So, keyframe, a little fast forward, and back on me to finish it off, and out it goes. And at this point in time, I'm going to end it, so I'm going to set the end marker, click. Now, if I were to come all the way back here and play this, You should see it spin around, up, pointing down at me, good. Spins up, looks at the roof, nice. Comes back down, should focus on me. Excellent, do a little walk. Should spin back around. Last but not least, when I get here, it should center itself back on me just to make sure, and then finish. Ready, center on me. Whoop, good. And we're done. So once we have that, we're just gonna go through kind of the same steps again. So in here, resolution, 1920s as high as we're gonna get, so that's good. If you wanna remove the fringe, you can. Export bitrate, I'm gonna crank that back up to superb. Choose my folder, change my name if I want. I can actually call this Greg's, Greg's Final, right? And export, and off she goes. And that's it, my friends. You have now created a file with all the spins in it that you need, about as stable as it's gonna get. And you can now put that in your editor and add that to the other stuff that you're working on. There you go, that's it for me. Hope that was useful. I'm learning this stuff as I go. Um, I'm gonna do one on the phone shortly as well, so you can see if you're not, if you don't have a computer or you don't have a desktop or you just like using your phone better. I'll put one of those up shortly, and you guys can watch that and love it, like it, comment on it, subscribe to it because you love it. All right, my friends, I'm out. And we will see you again in the next video. Later.